Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord tonight, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We welcome everybody, amen, to our, our Wednesday night, amen, Bible study here this evening, August 19th, 2020, the year of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you, amen, everybody, amen, here online, amen, on Facebook and on YouTube, amen, so that we, we amen, we'll be able to continue to just bring you the Word of God. So we thank God that we're here today. We thank God for each and every one of you. We're praying for you. Pray for us as we continue to draw closer to the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But before we get into our uh, our Bible study here this evening, we just want to worship the Lord. Amen. With that little song that says, uh, Amen. You deserve our worship. Everybody, sing it with me. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. Oh, oh, oh Lord. As we lift our hands to praise you, as we bow before your presence, you deserve our worship. You deserve. Oh Lord, hallelujah, one more time. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. Oh Lord, as we lift our hands to praise you, as we bow presence you deserve our worship you deserve our worship you deserve our worship oh Lord right there where you're at lift up your hands and worship the Lord God Almighty Lord Jesus Christ we give you all the honor the glory the praise the majesty the thanksgiving and everything we could ever render unto thee, almighty God, because you deserve all of our worship, our praise, the majesty, the thanksgiving, everything we could ever give to you, almighty God. You deserve it all. We thank you so much for the salvation of our souls. We thank you, Lord, for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we know, hallelujah, that you are coming soon. And very soon we are going to see the King. We're going to see you, almighty God, and we're going to see you the way you are. Hallelujah, we shall be, hallelujah, amen, drunk. caught up together with you in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and we're so anxiously awaiting that day, almighty God, that we can go to be home with you in eternity in Jesus Christ's name, hallelujah, and for this, we just, you deserve our worship, hallelujah, because you're a good God, you're great, and you're greatly to be praised. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. Oh, oh, oh Lord. As we lift our hands to praise you. As we bow before your presence. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. Oh, Lord. Glory, glory, glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He deserves our worship. Amen. He always has and he always will deserve all of our worship, our praise, our glory, our honor, and everything we could ever render unto Him, because He is great, and He is greatly to be praised. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to draw your attention, amen, as we enter into our Bible study here this evening. Amen. Uh, to 1 John 2.6. 1 John 2.6 uh, reads as follows. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk 
even as he walked. I'm going to read that again. 1 John 2 and 6. He that says that you dwell in God, you need to also walk even the way he walked. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you say, if we say that we're in God and he's in us, then our walk, amen, should be the same way as his was. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to talk to you today, this evening, for a few moments on just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what God is, that's what God wants to see out of our lives. He wants to see us walk closer with him. Praise the name of the Lord. And before I forget, amen, don't forget, amen, to continue to be faithful in, your, in God's financial plan and pay your tithes and give your offerings. Amen. Uh, and God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain or handle everything that God is going to pour out upon your life. Praise the name of the Lord. But amen. Uh, before we get into the word, amen, into, into our Bible study here this evening, let us go before the Lord in a word of prayer and ask him to bless us. Jesus, God Almighty, we come before you this evening just to give you the honor and the glory. And we ask, Almighty God, that you just bless us in a mighty way with your word. Amen. God Almighty, your word is blessed already. But God, we pray, God Almighty, edify us with your word in a special way, Lord, that we might draw closer to you, that we might walk Amen. Closer with you, Almighty God, that we might be able to walk more like you, Lord Jesus Christ, to be more like you and less of me and more of you. Hallelujah. That I may decrease and that you may increase in my life, Almighty, in our, all of our lives. Lord Jesus Christ, have your way in our lives, Lord Jesus Christ, and help us to be hearers and doers of your word, that when you return, you will find us faithful and you will find us fruitful. We ask you this tonight in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for uh, joining me in prayer. Amen. And, and the reading of the word of the Lord as we opened up here today. Remember, just a closer walk with thee. First John 2, 6, as we have stated, he that says that he abides in, in God, you yourself also, amen, needs to need to walk even the same way that he walked. So we're talking about just a closer walk with with Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to have here tonight because that's what the Lord is seeking, amen, from your life and mine. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He's seeking for you and I to have a closer walk, a closer relationship, amen, to be more like him and less of the world, less of the ourselves, and less, especially less of the enemy. God's will is that we draw closer to him. Amen. I preached a couple of Sundays ago in the beginning of August. I mean, the first Sunday of August, I preached a message, amen, talking to uh, the church about, amen, how important it is for us to be intimate with God. How God wants to have an intimate, more close, and a stronger relationship with, with, uh, our, with us. Praise the name of the Lord with us, each and every one of us. So, amen, this is what the Lord is seeking from our lives and so we should be seeking the same thing. We should also be seeking the same thing that God wants. What God wants, we should also want. Praise the name of the Lord. So, because God's will is that we draw closer to Him. Praise the name of the Lord. James 4.8 tells us this. Draw nigh to God, or draw near to God, and He will draw nigh to you, or He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. So we need to clean, amen, clean our lives, cleanse our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. And he refers to us as sinners because we are. Amen. We're sinners that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, but we're still sinners. Hallelujah. In need of salvation, in need of God in our lives. And we still have to purify ourselves because we're not, nobody is born Amen. Pure. We're all born with the fallen nature. And because we do have the fallen nature, we have to work upon, amen, our holiness. We have to work upon our purity in our life and being pure. Amen. Because nobody is born pure. You might be born innocent, but you're not pure. Amen. We might be born without the, 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 innocent of, uh, the innocence of sin and all that kind of stuff and the knowledge of sin. 
but we're not born pure. Praise the name of the Lord. So we need to, as the Bible says, clean our hands, cleanse our hands, us sinners, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We need to stop being double-minded, and we need to be sure in the things of God. Why doesn't God, you might say, why doesn't God draw near to me so that I will draw near to him? Why must I draw near to God first? Praise the name of the Lord. And there's a, a little analogy, analogy that, I like to, that I like to use regarding the farmer and his wife. Amen. The farmer was sitting behind the steering wheel, amen, in silence as he's driving. His wife was sitting on the other side of the, of the cab against the door, her door, and he was sitting on his side. After several miles down the road as they were driving, his wife tells him, amen, Bill, amen, when we first got married, we didn't sit this far apart. The old farmer just dryly in his uh, dry humor, amen, replied, I ain't the one that moved. So he's always been driving the truck, amen, as they've been <laughs> throughout the years of their life. And he's at the steering wheel, so he's not moving nowhere. He's been there the whole time. But she, amen, in her lifetime with him had drawn farther away from him. And so this is what happens, amen, to you and I, brothers and sisters, amen, is that even after, you know, we could have a long time serving God, maybe, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years or whatever, whatever the case might be in your life, five days, five months, five, uh, you know, five months, five weeks, amen, whatever the case might be. But what happens is after a certain amount of time, if we are not reminded, if you please, if we are not reminded Amen. That we need to stay close to God or, or read the word of God to, re, to be reminded, amen, of just how close we're supposed to be with God. We start to drift away because we lean to our own understanding. We get caught up in the, in the everyday humdrum of life and doing this, that, and the other. And we get distracted from what God really wants us to be doing. And that is staying and drawing close to him and staying there. God don't want you to just draw close, draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you, and then you go and drift away again. Because that's what a lot of people do. They're almost like a teeter-totter. You know what a teeter-totter is? Remember that little, that little thing you used to play on the playground? Your sister would sit on one end, you'd sit on the other. Amen. You used to make her fly off the other end because you'd take it, do it real hard. Amen. But that's how some people are. Sometimes they're up, and other times they're down. Sometimes they're up, and sometimes they're down. God don't want you to be up and down. God wants you to be, amen, close to him. Draw close to him and stay there. Can somebody say amen? See, because of, nobody knows the coming, that, that the moment that God's going to come back for his church. Because he's going to come like a thief in the night. He's not going to come when he, oh, yeah, I'm coming. I'm going to break into your house, so just be ready. He doesn't, a thief don't, and, amen, he don't announce to you when he's going to break into your house and take your TV and all that business. So, amen, neither does, is the coming of the Lord. He's not going to announce when he's coming. He's going to let you, he's going to, amen, give us the signs in order to be prepared, but he's not going to tell you the exact moment. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So you and I need to be ready at all times. That's all there is to it. Stay close to God. I tell people this all the time. Stay close to God, especially in the times in which we are living. These times of uncertainty, these times of, men of, a, of, of, of different things that are, that are happening so rapidly around us every day. So we need to be careful that we stay close to God. Praise the name of the Lord at all times because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know what's going to happen. We don't, I, don't know, I don't know what's going to happen, amen, but we do know this, amen. God's word is going to come to pass, and that's why everything that's happening is happening because God has already foretold, amen, especially his church and his people and his bride, amen, to get ready, amen, because he's coming back and he's coming soon, and his reward is with him. Can you somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So the way that we need to stay closer to him is very simple. Take time for the walk. Take time, amen, for everything you're supposed to be doing. Take time to pray. Make time to pray. Amen. Make time to go on that walk with God. What I'm talking about is when you walk with God, amen, make time to focus and, and put uh, uh, attention and, and importance and priority upon your relationship with God. 
Amen. How you're serving God, how you're, you're loving God, how you're, amen, praying to him and how you're fasting to him and how you're reading, amen, his words of everlasting life. Amen. You need to read the Bible. You need to, amen, because that's how God speaks to us. Some folks, amen, praise God. I'm, I, I wish it was that way for myself, amen, where some folks, they can, amen, the, 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 the Lord speaks to them, amen, in visions and in dreams. I, I wish to God I, I pray for that. But it's never happened. But you know where he talks to me? He talks to me right here. He talks to me when I read his word. Amen. He jumps out at me like he's telling me, Art, this is what I want you to focus on. This is what I want you to amen, tell my people to be careful, to stay close to me, less of themselves and more of me, to become more like me so they can please me and they can be ready for when I, hallelujah, when I come back, amen, and I want to please the Lord. I don't want to please the world. I don't want to please myself. I don't want to please him or her. I don't want to please, the, the, especially I don't want to please the enemy. I want to please God. Hallelujah, because he's the one that, 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 amen, that made a way. He's the one that died for us on the cross at Calvary. Amen. So we need to take time for the walk. Can somebody say amen? Walking with God. God often uses terms, amen, in his word that are common to us humans in the natural realm, amen, to describe spiritual truths. So he'll use them in natural terms like walking or, amen, uh, you know, running or working and different things. So he uses, amen, common terms, amen, to humans in the natural realm to describe spiritual things or spiritual truths. The Bible speaks of our eating the bread of life. You read that in John 6, 33 and 58. Drinking living water, John 14, 4, 14. Hearing what the Spirit says, Revelation 2, 7. And sitting in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6, along with many other terms. In other words, you know, the... Amen. Uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. You know, so it's a, amen, the word of God is a spiritual truth. Amen. It, but it is as a lamp and a light. Praise the name of the Lord. It's and many other things. There's so many other terms that God uses, amen, in order, praise the name of the Lord, to convey to us a spiritual message, amen, through natural terms or common terms that we humans use every day. Can somebody say amen? So from Genesis to Revelation, amen, we encounter the terms walk, walked, and walking concerning both God and us humans. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So from the day of Enoch, from the day of Enoch, who was described as one who walked with God, amen, and he was not, amen, for God took him, Genesis 5, 24, Amen. From the day of Enoch, who was described as one who walked with God, and then he was gone. Amen. Because God took him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis 5, 24. Until this present time, humans have used and understood what walking with God means. They, under, they understand what walking with God means. It means just serving the Lord, living for God, staying close to God, pleasing God, loving God. Hallelujah. Living for the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Walk as used in the Bible comes from the Greek word peripateo. Amen. Peripateo, which means to tread all around. Amen. Walk at large. Amen. To, li to live, to deport oneself, to follow or to be occupied with. That's what the word peripateo in the Greek means. Walk. Amen. When it Describes walking. He left us an example, amen, that we should follow his steps. 1 Peter 2 and 21. This is what it says in 1 Peter 2, 21. It says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we, that you ye should follow his steps. Can somebody say amen? So, in other words, the word of the Lord is telling us, because this is what you were called for. Because Christ also, because he suffered for us, he's, he's, he's making a statement. Christ suffered for us, and he, but he left us an example. He left us his example that we should follow his steps. Does that mean that we have to walk, amen, through the same streets of Galilee or uh, Jericho or uh, different uh, cities that, that the Lord of Jerusalem and uh, 
Judea and, and, and the, the homeland, amen, and the, the Holy Land. No, brother and sister, what it means is that we should live the same way that he, the example that he left us to live. That's, that's what it means, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. That you should live according to his word, the word that he exemplified to us, not only the, his written word, amen, but also the example that he gave us while he lived in this, in this world. As he dwelt in this world, praise the name of the Lord, the world that didn't, amen, that he made, and yet the world, amen, uh, knew him not. Praise the name of the Lord. That example that he left for you and I, we should follow in his steps. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So that doesn't mean you follow the exact steps where he stepped. It means that you live according to the word of God that he exemplified or left for you and I. Amen. To, to read, to follow, to make part of our life. Amen. And to... Uh, Amen. Become part of our life. Amen. And to draw closer to him. Can somebody say amen? So we're talking about walking with God. The importance of walking with God. What it means to walk with God. It means to live for God. It means to please God. It means to live according to the word of God. Amen. It, it, it means to overcome yourself, the world, and the devil. Can somebody say amen? And I'm going to give you some examples of how we are to walk. The first example I'm going to give you is we, start, we are to walk in the newness of life. In the new, the new life he has given to us, we need to walk in that way. Amen. Romans 6, 4 tells us this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So we die to ourselves and to the world and to sin. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk. In the newness of life. After we're baptized in Jesus' name and we leave all of our, amen, all of our sinfulness and everything, well, not, not our sinfulness, but all the sins up until the moment that we were baptized, amen, and the Bible says that there are to be cast into the deepest part of the ocean, never to be remembered again, amen. From that day forward, we are to walk differently. We're to live differently. We're to carry ourselves and act differently and, and be different, think different, and, and, and live according to the word of God and not according to, amen, the old life. Amen. No, but to walk in the newness of life, in that new wonderful life that God has given us to live our lives over again. I remember I used to think to myself, man, if I could, if I could only live my life over again. Well, when you give your life to the Lord, you can live your life over again. You don't have to live in the past. You don't have to live with all the, the failures and all the mess and all that stuff that you and I, amen, created before we came to the Lord. That all stuff, amen, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Praise the name of the Lord. When you're loving Jesus Christ and you give your life to the Lord, there's no better, there's no better life than serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I tried living for the world for 26 years. And in 1983, I gave my life to the Lord, and I've been serving the Lord ever since. Amen. And you can't compare. I can't. Nothing I did in those 26 years could ever even compare to the worst day I've had since I've been serving the Lord. Nothing can compare to it because there's no better life than serving the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been a good God to me. Praise the name of the Lord. And he's been good to you and me, all those of you that know who Jesus is and that have given your life to the Lord. But that newness comes from the Greek word kainotis, amen, meaning renewal, amen, newness and freshness. Praise the name of the Lord. This is, this is what God gives us the opportunity to, to live a new life, a new walk, a new talk, a new man. You don't have to be that old guy no more. You don't have to be that troublemaker no more. You don't have to be in trouble anymore. You don't have to worry about all that junk that we used to do and be involved in. It's over because God gives us a chance to live our lives over again. Nobody else can do that except Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? The second example I want to give you, the first was in the newness of life. We need to also walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I pray for this every day. Because I'm human just like anybody else. I have the fallen nature. I'm a man just like anybody else. I'm human. Galatians 5.16 says this. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Because your flesh and mine. Amen. Is very strong. It can be. Especially if you don't pray. If you don't have a prayer life. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. You are going to have problems. Somebody. Can somebody say amen? You will have problems. I guarantee you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if you don't walk in the spirit, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't, amen, put a, 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 a importance upon your relationship with God and you get weak and you let the, the flesh get stronger and the spirit get weaker, amen, you will fulfill the lust of your flesh. That's why the scripture says, this I say then, walk in the spirit. You want to have a closer walk with God? Walk in the spirit. And don't be a big old carnal Arnold over there, amen, all uh, carnalon and amen, and just wanting to, amen, do all the things that we used to do from before. That's not what we're supposed to be doing anymore. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now that we're, we're spirit-filled, you have the Holy Ghost, you speak another tongue, that's good. But some people never use it. Amen. It's almost like a, like a set of keys in your pocket. You ask somebody, hey, you got the Holy Ghost? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got the Holy Ghost right here. Amen. Let me ask you a question. But does the Holy Ghost have you? Amen. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. I pull it out whenever I feel I want to speak in tongues in church or whatever. Amen. But how about how about every day? How about when nobody else is around? How about when it's just you and her? How about when it's <laughs> hello, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. That Holy Spirit is to have we're as we're supposed to be spirit filled, and we're to walk in the Spirit. We are to walk after the leadership of the Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. Into all truth and righteousness, the Bible says. Amen. So we are to walk in the Spirit. We are to be led of the Spirit. And we are to live of the Spirit. In other words, not just going around, just doing what you... Yeah, you know, I have this agenda. And yeah, I have this, uh, I have this ulterior motive over here. And I got all... Man, you know what? Wait a minute. What happened to the priority? What happened to... Amen. Uh, uh, the living according to the word and the will and the ways of God. What happened to that? Amen. Yeah, okay, I get, you know, I see bad people get baptized all the time. Amen. And then last a month, two months, three months, and then, hey, what happened to so-and-so? I don't know. Amen. Their, 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 their dedication or their, their, amen, their commitment to God was very, very shallow, brother. Amen. You need to be determined, man. You know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. And so if you're sick and tired enough, you're going to learn a lesson. And this is what I pray for uh, God's people all the time. Lord, help them to draw close to you and stay there. I pray for my brothers and sisters. Help them to stay close to you. Amen. So that they don't fail you. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I will not sin against you, Lord. I don't want to sin against you because that's what separates us from him is sin. Can somebody say Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Hallelujah. How are we to walk in the newness of life? We are to walk, amen, according to the word, the will, and the ways of God. We are to walk after his commandments. Amen. We are to walk according to his word or after his commandments. And this is what it says in 2 John 1, 6. This is what it says. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Andale. How's that? A declaration, a statement, a fact. It says, this is love, that we walk after his commandments or what he says. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. The word commandment here refers to the whole of Scripture after uh, applicable to Christian, our Christian conduct. Amen. Commandment, that's what it means here to re refers to the whole of Scripture. Everything in the Word of God that is applicable to you and I in our Christian conduct. How we carry ourselves. How we are to be. Amen. And, and so we, this is love. That's love. You want to know what love is? And that is to walk after His commandments. You love God, you're going to live according to His Word. Simple as that. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, and you've been told since the beginning that you should walk in it, in the Word of God. Obedience to Scripture, scriptural commands demonstrates our love for Him. Living, loving God and submitting to His Word are inseparable forces. You can't, you can't separate them. Amen. Let me say that again. 
loving God and being submissive to his word are two things that you cannot separate. You can't love God and hate his word. Or you can't, amen, love his word and hate God. Amen. You got to love God and you got to love his word. Can somebody say amen? You have to love the word of God and submit to his word. Praise the name of the Lord. Accompanying our love for God will be the love for our brothers and our sisters. Proof that we truly love him. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have to love one another. And that doesn't mean you walk around kissing people and hugging people and, 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 and you know, being all that. I'm not talking about that. It's talking about caring about other people. Amen. Caring about other people. Praying for them. Doing, uh, you know, friendly, kindly gestures of, of care and concern and what have you. Amen. It doesn't necessarily mean you're walking around hugging and kissing anybody. Especially right now, we can't do it anyway. So forget that. Amen. So when we walk in truth after his commandments... And according to the rule that God has distributed to us, then we can truly say yes, hallelujah, that we are walking in him. When we walk in truth, when you walk according to the word of God and after his commandments and according to the rule that God has distributed or given to us, then we can truly say that we are walking in him. Can somebody say amen? All right. Praise the name of the Lord. How are we to walk? Number four. Amen. We're supposed to walk in the light. We're supposed to walk in the light. Can somebody say amen? We have to walk in the light. Ephesians 5 and 8. This is what it tells us in the word of God. For you were sometimes darkness. We were sometimes darkness. I know I was. But now you are light. He says, now are you, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. Mm. He tells us very emphatically and, and makes a declaration, a statement here. For you, we were sometimes dark. And we were darkness because of the life that we lived. The sinful, ungodly, unholy, evil lives that we lived. We were darkness. He says, for you were sometimes darkness. He says, we were darkness, brother. We were bad. That's not good. Okay, but now are we light in the Lord, that is. We are light in the Lord because we walk as children of light. Because his, his, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So we, as, as long as you apply this to your life, you are also going to be light. Amen. Salt and light to this world. Amen. Without flavor, without Amen. Without anything good in it, praise the name of the Lord because of the sin that's in the world today. So you and I have to make this world a better place. Can somebody say amen? But we have to walk in the light. We have to be that example. Outside the church, darkness pervades. And you see that today. It is, it is strong out there. Darkness pervades in, this, in the, the spiritual atmosphere. Each of us should take, amen, care lest the light in us become darkness. I remember many years ago, there was a young man that was on fire for God. I remember he used to stand up and give thanks, and he would say, I want to just thank God for being in my father's house because it's so refreshing to be here in my father's house. I used to just admire him. I would look up at him and just say, wow, man, that, that brother, he's in love with Jesus. He loves the Lord. He's doing great. That's, that's good, man. I used to be, be encouraged when I would see him. And then after a while, I remember one day, one time, uh, this certain sister told me, uh, yeah, you know so-and-so, she was referring to him. And I said, yeah, I know, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And she told me, you know what, something's wrong. And I said, why, why is that, sister? And she said, because uh, his light's not shining anymore. Uh-oh. I said, you know what, I never thought about that. And after that, I paid attention, a little closer attention and that's exactly what happened. Amen. Somewhere along the way, something started to go wrong in his life. Amen. And his light no longer uh, shined like it used to. It wasn't shining anymore like it used to be, like he used to, when he used to stand up and give thanks. And eventually he left the Lord. That's, that's a sad thing, brother and sister. That, that grieves my heart because I know so many people that have walked hand in hand with me many years. Good people, people that love God. I mean, because let me tell you something. When people are serving the Lord, 
God brings out the best out of you. But when people are in the world, the, the devil brings out the worst out of a person. And so when they were here walking with us, serving the Lord, they were good people, man. They were wonderful people. They were, they were our friends. We loved them. And it, it, amen. And you, it, it bothered me when I would see them leave the Lord and the things of God. And that things like this happened and their light wasn't shining no more. And, and they no longer, amen, love the Lord They're being, like they once upon a time they did. So, amen, we need to... Hallelujah. We need to take care lest our light in us becomes darkness also like this young man. Amen. Let, ease, let us hear the warnings to believers concerning walking in the light. Giving heed lest darkness engulfs us again. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 13 and 12. It says, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Romans 13 and 12. Ephesians 5.11 also says, amen. And Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Don't be hanging around with people that are in dark. Amen. Because tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. You hang around with people that are sinners. You're at work over there and hanging around with the guys over there in the lunchroom. And they're telling dirty jokes and all that kind of stuff. That, that evil communication will corrupt your good manners. You don't got no business doing that stuff. Looking at the wrong websites and all this kind of business on the Internet or on your computer or on your cell phones or your smartphones. Or, they're, they're not, those phones aren't that smart. They're pretty dumb. Amen. When you're going to use it for the wrong things. Can somebody say amen? So you got to cast off the works of darkness and put on the whole armor of light. And you also need to be careful to not have, hallelujah, fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them means to rebuke them, expose them, or stay away from them. Very simple. If they're going to be around you and you have no alternative, you're at work and they're over there. Amen. Because I remember that was a time I had to be at work and this one young man would always try to uh, uh, allure me, entice me, and, and, and mess me up and cause me to fall and trip and all that stuff. Until I finally had to just, when it was just me and him alone, I just asked him, please do me a favor. You know I'm a Christian. Stop doing that to me. And because I did, he stopped. Amen. But I had to reprove him because that's what the Bible says. It says, and you have, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, which means to rebuke or expose them. And when you put, you have, it's like a bully. You're in the playground. They just keep be bullying you all the time. You got to put a stop to it. You know, you got to do whatever you got to do to stop them from bullying you. And many times when you stand up to them, they, they stop. Amen. And so that's what the word of the Lord tells us here. That rather reprove them, rebuke, expose them. Can somebody say amen? All right. So we're talking about how are we to walk. And we've mentioned that we are to walk in the newness of life, walk in the spirit, walk after his commandments or according to the word of God, walking in the light. We need to walk in the light. Amen. And, and as we talked about light and darkness, because they don't have anything in common. They have nothing in common in common. Praise the name of the Lord. And let me, let me show you where the scripture says. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says this. But ye, but you and I, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't, don't, don't bind yourself together with an unbeliever. Why am I going to marry a man, somebody that don't believe in Jesus Christ? Why am I going to, amen, get together with somebody that has from a dump, some other religion. What am I going to do, amen, to be yoked together with somebody that isn't going to go in the same direction that I'm going to go? It's not good. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is what the scripture says. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and with what communion has light with darkness? In other words, what does, what does light and darkness have in common? Nothing. They're exactly the opposite. And how about righteousness and unrighteousness? What am I doing if I'm supposed to be righteous and I'm hanging around with a bunch of unrighteous people? Unless I'm witnessing to them to come to church and give their lives to the Lord. Otherwise, I shouldn't, I shouldn't hang around with them. Amen. But it doesn't, doesn't mean that you can't talk to somebody. It doesn't mean that, you know, we are to be separated, but we're not supposed to be isolated. 
We're, we're separated unto God, but we're not isolated. We're not hermits. Amen. We need to interact with other people, especially, amen, people that don't know Jesus yet. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, amen. But we can't be yoked together with unbelievers because, amen, righteousness and unrighteousness doesn't have no, amen, no, 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 no fellowship. And neither does communion, uh, light and darkness have the same, have communion together or anything in common. Amen. Let me read Philippians 2.15 also that says this. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And that's where we're at. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says that we need to be found blameless and harmless. Not with a bunch of, oh, yeah, I know him, and he does all, man, I, he goes to your church, oh, my God, man, I know that guy, he does, man, I heard about this, that, oh, man, you don't want, you don't want to have a testimony like that. You want to be found blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without being a rebuke or being found or, or, or anybody exposing you or, 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 or anything like that because you're, you're not what you're supposed to be. You don't want to do that. You don't ever want to do that because the Bible says that we may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, without any fault being found, being able to be find any fault in your life, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And don't isn't that the, the truth? We live in the midst of a, of a nation that is crooked and perverse. Amen. They're, in, they're not just perverse. They're in reverse. Amen. I've never seen the good old U.S. of A. the way it is today. My goodness, where they're calling evil good and good evil, and they want to, oh, my God. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. Amen. But it is believable because God said these days were going to come. Can somebody say amen? So we need to hold to, walk in, and keep keeping aflame this marvelous light as we walk as he walked. Can somebody say amen? How are we to walk also, number five? Amen. We are to walk by faith. We are to walk by faith. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, says, it tells us very clearly, for we walk by faith, not by sight, not by your feelings, not by that which is tangible, not by that which is uh, in the natural sense. We live according to our faith. We live according to what we know this, his word says, and we live according to his word. Many times, that not, it, it, it's almost, amen, uh, contrary to uh, common logic, amen, living by faith is. Praise the name of the Lord. So walking by faith is trusting the word and the spirit. When doing so seems a, in direct contradiction to all human reason. Amen. It seems like it, it, it's a direct, amen, contradiction, amen, to all human logic. Amen. It, this doesn't make sense, man. I, I, you don't do that because, you, you know, that doesn't get you this and what have you. But faith, amen, goes farther than your feelings and your sight and that which is tangible. Can somebody say amen? In the natural world, the alternative, the alternative to traveling by sight is flying by instruments, right? Amen. And sailing by radar. That's what the, the airplanes and the, and the boats do. In the spiritual realm, it is walking by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Even though I don't see, amen, I can fly by the instruments in my plane because the instruments are going to guide me even though I can't see what's in front of me. Or I'm on, a, I'm, on a, I'm on a sailing boat or a boat, amen, and I can go by radar because the radar is guiding me even though I can't see where I'm going. Well, in the spiritual realm, it's walking by faith. We walk by faith, amen, even though you can't see it, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen, but nonetheless, I'm going to serve the Lord by faith, not by, not by what I see, but what I know his word, amen, says. Moses walked this road where no visible footprints appeared. Hey, hallelujah. Hebrews 11:27 says this. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king or of Pharaoh, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Amen. The faith of Moses, amen, helped him to over, uh, amen, to look beyond, amen, and forsake Egypt and all the pleasures and all the comforts of Egypt that he was, he could have had it made. 
to second only to Pharaoh. He could have probably eventually been Pharaoh if he wanted to. Amen. But he didn't care about the king. He didn't care about Pharaoh. He didn't care about Egypt. Amen. For he endured because he saw him who was invisible, even though he didn't see him. What does that mean? In other words, he lived by faith, the faith that he knew that his God lived even though he didn't see him. So he, that is their definition of what faith is. Faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. Can somebody say amen? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you can't even see. Abraham knew what it was to walk this walk. Amen. We too are called to walk in the steps of the faith, amen, of our father Abraham. Can somebody say amen? How are we to walk? We are so, number six, we are also to walk honestly. We need to be honest, not dishonest. We used to be dishonest all day long. Amen. We used to pride ourselves in being dishonest. Ha, ha, ha. Did you see that? I got away with this, telling this big old lie. Amen. We are not to walk like that anymore. We are to walk honestly. Amen. Romans 13, 12 tells us this. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13. Let us walk honestly. Amen. As in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering, which means illicit intercourse. And wantonness, not in strife and envying. Not like that. Hallelujah. But walk, walking honestly as in the day. Amen. Because those that are in, they're walking in the, in the dark at night. Hallelujah. They, they, they're in rioting and drunkenness and chambering and wantonness and in strife and in envy. God don't want us to live like that no more. He wants us to walk honestly as in the day. Can somebody say amen? We need to cast off the, the works of darkness. Cast them off. Get rid of them. And let us put on the armor of light. Put on the word of God and live according to this light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Why does it say walk honestly as in the day? Because in the daytime you're not trying to hide from the evil deeds that you're doing because you're, you're doing Evil things, sinful things, ungodly things, criminal things. Can somebody say amen? Let us walk honestly as in the day. Webster defines, defines honesty as the state of being honest, a refraining from lying or being a liar, cheating or stealing, being truthful, trustworthy, upright, sincerity, fairness. These characteristics should define the life of every Christian Today, can somebody say amen? You have terms that, that are used today as uh, uh, fake news. Fake news, or uh, there's other terms I can't, they, they slip my mind at the moment, but fake news, all that is is puras mentiras. <laughs> fake news. What's fake news? They're just deceiving you. Amen. They're not telling you the truth. It's either the truth or a lie. That's all there is to it. And all that other business is, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, he just doesn't, uh, uh, he just doesn't, uh, he's just dishonest. He's just a liar. And that's all that is. Amen. Son puras mentiras. Praise the name of the Lord. God don't want us to be liars anymore. We used to be good at it. We were so good, we used to believe our own lies. After a while, we started to think, man, that was, yeah, that was really the truth. It wasn't the truth. You were, you were, you're believing your own lies now. And somebody say, man. Hallelujah. As 1 Thessalonians 4.12 tells us about that we should, amen, uh, amen, that, that these things, being honest and, 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 and uh, uh, being an honest person, refraining from lying, cheating, stealing, truthful, trustworthy, all these things are found in 1 Thessalonians 4.12. 4, we need to also, number seven, we need to walk in love. We need to walk in love. Love is one of the major themes that you find in the Bible. It is something we are to walk in, follow, be occupied with, order our behavior in, and regulate our life by. Can somebody say amen? Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 tells us this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Amen. Verse 2. And walk in love. 
Praise the name of the Lord. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Love is a powerful motivator. We should always allow it to guide our lives. Let me say that again. Love is a powerful thing to motivate your life. We should always allow love to guide our lives. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number eight, we need to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Ephesians 4 and 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Vocation in this verse comes from the Greek word klesis. Klesis, meaning an invitation. Its verb form means to be invited, appointed, or called. So we are to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Colossians 1.10. Praise the name of the Lord. But let me go back, amen, to the, amen, what the scripture tells us. I, therefore, the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation, of the calling. Praise the name of the Lord that you have been appointed to. Amen. That you have been, the invitation that has been given to you, the invitation, amen, uh, that you've been invited the, or what you've been appointed to do or what you've been called to do. Walk worthy of, hallelujah, of that vocation, of that calling wherewith you've been called. We have all been called for a reason. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. As, as he says, as the writer says in amen, uh, Ephesians 4 and 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, he says, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation or the calling that you've been called because you've been called. You haven't been Amen. You're not mama called and daddy sent. You've been called by God, not by mommy and daddy. You've been, you haven't been mama called or daddy sent. You've been called by God. And God has given us a vocation, a reason, a calling, an invitation, an appointment that we fulfill that, hallelujah, that calling. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We also to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Colossians 1.10. Paul prayed for the Thessalonican saints that God would count you worthy of this calling. 2 Thessalonians 1.11. Excuse me. Amen. So Paul prayed for the church at Thessalon I mean, the saints at Thessalonica. Amen. Hallelujah. That God would count them worthy of their calling. Praise the name of the Lord. And also we are to walk worthy of God who has called us, amen, into his kingdom and glory. 1 Thessalonians 2.12. Let me read it again. Walk, amen, God has called us to walk worthy of God who has called us unto his kingdom and glory. Amen. So we are to walk worthy of God. We are to be worthy. So we have to walk. These are all the different things that we need to take care and play, play much pay much concern and give much attention to, amen, in the, how we walk with God, how we are to walk with God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There's all many, so many times of, types of other scriptures that tell us, amen, that we are to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. We are also called with a holy calling, 2 Timothy 1.9. You can write these down because I'm not going to go through each scripture. I'm just Referring to them so that you can see them. We are called with a holy calling. 2 Timothy 1.9 We are partakers of a heavenly calling. Amen. Hebrews 3 and 1 We are to be holy since the one who has called us is also holy. 1 Peter 1.15 We are called to be saints. 1 Corinthians 1.2 we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light, 1 Peter 2.9. We are called to peace, 1 Corinthians 7.15. And we are called to glory and virtue, 2 Peter 1.3. Praise the name of the Lord. How are we to walk? Number nine, walk in good works. God has ordained and designed Christians to walk in good works, Ephesians 2.10. Our body without our spirit is dead. 
So faith without works is dead also, James 2.26. Faith without works is dead. Works are an exhibition or a display of the unseen force, amen, of faith in each of us as believers. Praise the Lord, somebody. But faith without works is dead. Because if, if, if our works are an exhibition of the unseen force of faith that we have in our lives, then it has to be seen. Because faith, if you have faith and yet you don't do anything, it's dead. There's something wrong there. At every opportunity, we are to do good to all people. We are to, good to be good to all men, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Brother and sister, we are to do good. The Bible says to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. But we also, at every opportunity, we are to, good, to do good to all people, everybody. Amen. But especially to those who are of the household of faith. Those that are also our brothers and sisters in the Lord. How are we to walk circumspectly as I try to hurry up as much as I can Circumspectly, amen, comes from the Greek word akribos, amen, meaning exactly, diligently, perfectly. Ephesians 5.15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Mm -hmm. God expects us to conduct our lives in a careful manner. Hallelujah. He condemns loose, compromising, unholy lives. Amen. So the walk of a Christian is through a straight gate and on a narrow path. Praise the Lord, somebody. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says this. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Can somebody say amen? We are to walk circumspectly. We are to walk exactly, diligently, perfectly, according to the word of God. How we are not to walk? We are not to walk disorderly. We are not to walk as carnal men. We are not to walk in darkness. We are not to walk by sight. We are not to walk in craftiness. We are not to walk in the vanity of our mind. And we are not to walk after the flesh. Hallelujah. The promise from God, amen, for walking with him is found in Revelation, amen, 3, 4, and 5. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Brothers and sisters, as we rapidly approach the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us walk the way God wants us to walk. For there is no better way to enjoy life to its fullest than when we're walking with God. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis 5 and 24 says this, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He took him because before his, amen, before God took him, he had this testimony that he pleased God, brother and sister. Live your life. We need to live our lives, amen, in order to please God. I want my life be pleasing to you Lord I am not perfect I fall short of the glory of God every day and so I need to pray please forgive me of my sins my unrighteousness my, my shortcomings my transgressions all the things almighty God that I do wrong help us Lord look at me through your blood almighty God and lead me continue to lead me in the way everlasting 
Almighty God, this is our prayer. This should be our prayer every day. Hallelujah. As we rapidly approach the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to be walking with him, brothers and sisters. We need to walk the way he walked. We need to be like him. Less of me. Hallelujah. And more of God. Hallelujah. And, and draw close to the Lord and stay there. Be intimate with God. And, and bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. Unto the Lord. And do something for God now that you have the opportunity. Now that we have a chance while it is still day. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord God bless you all. Members of Family Life Center and those that aren't members of Family Life Center that are watching us here tonight. May the Lord bless you. We love you. God loves you. He died for you. And he wants you to walk with him. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to you. Draw close to him and he'll draw close to you. Amen. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen. This is our prayer for you. That we all make heaven our home one day and see him face to face and spend eternity in his presence. Let's pray as we come to a close of this Bible study. Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor and the glory and we thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be here today, tonight, Almighty God, in one mind and one accord, to hear your word on just having a closer walk with thee, Almighty God, and what it means to walk close to you and what it does not mean. Lord, and help us to be hearers and doers of your word. Help us to apply what we have heard here tonight. God Almighty, that we might be found faithful and fruitful when you return for your, your bride, for your church, and for each and every one of us, Almighty God. We pray for those that don't know you yet. We pray for them, Almighty God, that they can give their lives to you also the way we did once upon a time. And they will join us, amen, in this salvation, Almighty God, that this rich and beautiful and wonderful salvation that's only in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, let it be so. And we claim this prayer answered in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us here, amen, this Wednesday evening uh, and being with us for our Bible study that we had. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a closer walk with you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But I have a few announcements. Well, basically, I need to go through my prayer list that I, I usually uh, try to go through at least once a week. And uh, here, since seeing that it's uh, here this Wednesday, praise the name of the Lord, I want to go through the list and you just bear with me. And we'll go through all, the, all those that need our prayers, and then we're going to pray for them. And then you'll be, amen, uh, that'll be it. But uh, I want to continue to remind you to pray for all these individuals. Joe Gonzalez for healing. Josie Nieto for healing. Lorenzo Gamboa for healing. Beatriz Aguirre for healing. Dalvina Diaz for her health. Stephanie Navarro, spiritual strength. Brother and sister Quiroz for, amen, because they're frail. They need strength. John Barcelo, same thing. Daniel Jaime for healing, Maria Luz Cardenas for strength, Belinda Hernandez for deliverance, Antonia Romero for strength, Allison Carolina Ariola for restoration, Manuel Rodriguez for healing, Anaya Mesa for healing, Gilbert Amaraz for liver, his liver transplant that he's waiting for, uh, Noah Marin for strength as he's a, he's, he was a premature baby but he's doing great, he's, he's getting better, praise the Lord, Helen Delgado for healing, Pauline Gutierrez for healing. Amen, who's in the hospital, as a matter of fact, there in Greater Almighty Hospital. We need to pray for Pauline Gutierrez. Philip Martinez for healing. Ruben Quiroz in Uganda, evangelizing that God will make a way for him to come back home and he'll be all right. Andrew Ovalle for healing. Carmen Gamboa for healing. David Manso, who had the coronavirus. I, I believe he's out of the woods, but I'm not sure. I haven't received an update. Same thing with Juan Carlos Orozco. Eloise Olmos for back problems. Pastor Ruben Villegas, give God the glory. He's already been healed. Antoinette Ventura, I believe from coronavirus that she's also, also been, uh, she's out of the woods now. Eduardo Duenas, amen, who had, uh, uh, who broke his wrist, amen, from an accident that he had. 
Also, Sister Ana Quinones, amen, who cut her hand real bad. We need to pray for Sister, continue to pray for Sister Ana Quinones from the Spanish ministry and Eduardo Duenas from the Spanish ministry. Alexa Ramos for her speedy recovery from the surgery that she went through. Delilah Reese, David Vargas, Pastor Raymond Camacho, amen, also who had coronavirus. And Kyla Rivera who broke her hand. We need to continue to pray for our brother Angel, amen, his wife Angie, Angel Jr., James, James Gonzalez, also, Avelica and Joel Gonzalez. We need to pray for the Gonzalez family, a man who had an outbreak of a coronavirus in their, in their family. So we need to pray for them and keep them in our prayers that God would, amen, uh, keep his mighty hand upon them and they would all recover from this uh, dreaded virus, amen, and we would be sure to give him all the honor and the glory, amen, for answering our prayers and our cries. So right there where you're at, back home, right now this evening let's pray together jesus god almighty we come before you to give you the honor and the glory and we thank you lord for the faith that you have instilled in us almighty god because faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word and tonight we have gained our faith lord jesus christ amen through the word the bible study that we received here this evening and with that measure of faith amen we apply it towards the prayers and those individuals that we have mentioned here this evening almighty god we pray for them those that need to be healed heal them those that need to be saved, save them. Those that need to be delivered, deliver them. Those that need to be restored, restore them. And those that need comforting, comfort them. That we might be sure to give you all the honor and the glory for answering our prayers and hearing our cry today as we claim these prayers answered in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I also would like to congratulate, amen, my son, Art, amen, and his wife, Sylvia Diaz, on their baby boy. Amen. Born uh, Tuesday, August 11th at 10.44. Ezra Aziel Diaz, 7 pounds, 12 ounces, 19 and a half inches long. Congratulations, son. Amen. You and Sylvia, God bless you. Amen. For uh, making me, amen, making this number 11. Amen. Our 11th uh, grandchild. Amen. And like, praise the name of the Lord. My, uh, 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 another Diaz added to the family. God bless you, church. Thank you for joining us in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you Friday for our, amen, our preaching. Amen. We'll be with Brother Ruben Lopez. Amen. On Friday night. And then also remember our, our Spanish is also, amen, here tonight also. Amen. And also uh, uh, our services on Sunday. God bless you. We'll see you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.